Hello, and welcome back to Analyzing Literature. I'm your host, Mr. Miniman. Today we're going to talk about mood. Now, mood is how a passage makes the reader feel. It's not necessarily how the character feels. It's how the reader feels. So, for instance, think of a horror movie where the audience knows that the main character is walking into a room with a serial killer in it. The main character is completely unaware. They're like jamming out to their music or whatever, having a good time, and they're walking into this room. So the character's mood is happy, carefree, but the mood of the audience is much more tense and fearful. So the mood is how it affects the reader or the audience. Mood is also connected to the atmosphere of a scene. How does it feel to the reader? The mood can be created through the use of the author describing the setting. If the setting is very creepy and oppressive, then that's going to affect the reader. And if the setting is peaceful and tranquil and beautiful, then that will affect the reader. An author will also use imagery to create a mood. If the images are ominous and distressing, then the reader will feel that ominous feeling, that feeling of foreboding. If the images are comforting and domestic, then the reader will feel that. An author will also use diction or word choice to communicate a mood. For instance, if the diction, if the words all have positive feelings, positive connotations, then that feeling will transfer to the reader. If they all have negative feelings, then that feeling will transfer to the reader. Another way an author will communicate a mood is through character reactions. If the characters are fearful or amused, or content, those feelings will transfer toward the reader. That doesn't always work, because like I said, sometimes an author will use a character who is ignorant of the situation, and you can't really follow their emotions or their reactions, but if there's a character in a scene who is particularly aware of what's happening, then you can follow their emotions, and their emotions can be transferred to the reader. So let's look at an example of a scene like that. This is the scene where Atticus sits in front of the jailhouse door and faces down a lynch mob of country folk from Maycomb who want to come in and give Tom Robinson quote-unquote justice. A perceptive reader will understand that that's what's happening, but For younger readers or readers who are paying less attention, Harper Lee gives them an idea of what they should be feeling. For instance, here at the top, when one of the men say, you know what we want, get aside from the door, Mr. Finch, a perceptive reader will know what they want. They want to lynch Tom Robinson. But not every reader might be able to pick up on that. And some of the readers might be following Scout's curiosity as she watches this. She doesn't really know what to think. So there are clues to a perceptive reader of how to feel. But for those who didn't pick that up, she gives them a much stronger impression lower down. When Scout stumbles into this confrontation, Atticus's reaction is what we should follow. She said, um, his face killed my joy. A flash of plain fear was going out of his eyes. So that tells the reader how they should feel about this. They should be terrified for Scout's safety because she unknowingly has stumbled into the middle of a confrontation that could turn violent. But earlier on, we had impressions of how dangerous the situation is. Um, For instance, the men said they called Hectate off on a snipe hunt. They got Hectate distracted. He's off doing some, uh, chasing some wild goose so that they could come here 
and Lynch Tom Robinson. So all these are very tense interactions between Atticus and the men. But again, for those who didn't pick up on it, Harper Lee gives you a big flashing sign right here for how you should feel about the scene. So this is what I wrote. When Atticus defends Tom Robinson in front of the jail, Harper Lee creates a very tense, frightening mood. Interestingly, Scout is the only one who isn't aware of how dangerous the situation is. So Lee uses Atticus to show the reader how to feel. Scout bursts into the middle of the confrontation, thinking her father will be happy to see her. Instead, his face killed her joy. She describes his face as a flash of plain fear. If at that point the reader is unsure how to feel about the scene, Harper Lee uses Atticus as a guide. Scout doesn't realize it, but she stumbled into the middle of a potentially violent altercation between a lynch mob and her father. So, I define the mood here. That's really important. You, have to, you can't just say that the author is using mood, because an author is always using mood. If you're going to analyze the mood of a particular passage, then you have to define the mood of that particular passage very clearly. You have to say what the mood is. And then you explain how the author creates it. In this case, I used Atticus's reaction as how Harper Lee creates the mood. The mood was tense before that, but we understand how serious the situation really is when we see Atticus look um, in plain fear, as she says, because we don't usually see Atticus um, that emotional. All right. So now go find a scene in your book that has a strong mood and analyze how the author creates that mood. Mindem and out.